Today on Northern Revolutions, I'm going to share with you the bizarre story behind John Lennon's rock and roll. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hey, Violent Community. Welcome to Northern Revolutions. I'm Rob. Welcome back if you're returning. Welcome if you're new. Today, as I record this, it's the 10th of December. This past week marked the 42nd anniversary of the murder of John Lennon, who unquestionably is my most favorite musician and the person whose music has had the most profound impact on my life. I was only two when John was, was murdered, so I don't recall him, you know, being alive because I was too young, uh, but uh, it's still kind of a somber day for me because his music means so much to me. So I thought today I would talk about my favorite John Lennon record, which is one that I think it's ignored by almost everybody, and that's his February 1975 release rock and roll generally doesn't get talked about by people i mean everyone talks about imagine and everyone talks about plastic ono band great records for some reason rock and roll has always been my favorite so i wanted to talk about it today because it actually has a fascinating backstory that uh, is is just bizarre so it all began with the recording of the Beatles Abbey Road. Everyone's likely familiar with the song Come Together, which was the lead single off that album. What you may not know is that John was sued for copyright infringement for that song. There was a publishing company called Big Seven Publishing, which was owned by a guy named Morris Levy. And that's the publishing company that owned the right to all of Chuck Berry's material. And John got sued because there is a part of Come Together, which sounds very much like You Can't Catch Me, which is a Chuck Berry song. The line, um, Here Come Old Flat Top Grooving Up Slowly, which is from Come Together, sounds almost exactly like the line in the Chuck Berry song that goes, Here Come a Flat Top Moving Up With Me, um, something to that effect. And actually, John and Paul knew that it sounded like the Chuck Berry song. So they purposely slowed the tempo down, added a really heavy bass riff to it, and come together that line's in D, D minor 7. In the Chuck Berry song, it's G7, so a different key. But even though you slow down the tempo and add the bass, they're eerily similar, and John and Paul knew it. So... Uh, that court case actually went on for a number of years and was finally heard in December of 73. It was settled out of court, however, and uh, while the details are not officially made public, what it boiled down to is that John was now sort of contractually obligated to record three songs from the Big Seven publishing catalog on his upcoming album so that Morris Levy could recoup royalties from those three songs. So that brings us to the actual recording of the album Rock and Roll. It was a chaotic year-long process. John was actually split from Yoko at the time and he was living with his assistant May Pang in California and they were having an affair that's sort of known as, as John's Lost Weekend. And uh, he commissioned Phil Spector to produce an album of rock and roll covers. So Phil Spector set up in the A&M studios in California and any session musician that was anybody at the time 
wanted to be part of this. I mean, there's a list of you know, 30 or 40 musicians that were part of the production of this album. And it's a who's who of session players. But uh, those sessions with Phil Spector uh, degenerated into alcohol-fueled chaos. I mean, I read one story that, you know, one day Phil Spector came in dressed as a surgeon and started shooting a gun at the ceiling of the studio and it actually damaged John's ears temporarily. Just absolute chaos. And what John didn't know is that every night Phil was taking the master tapes home with him and keeping them at his house. After the sessions ended, Phil was in a car accident in March of 74 and John lost access to these masters. No one knew where they were. Phil was in a coma for a short period of time. So the work on the rock and roll covers album, it was not, it didn't have a name yet, was shelved. And John went into the studio to start working on what would become Walls and Bridges. When Walls and Bridges was released, it actually did have one Morris Levy owned song on it. And that did not fill the contractual obligations uh, that John had agreed to. So uh, Morris sued John again. And John tried to assure him that the covers album had just been on temporary hiatus, that it was still in the works. So John reconvened the session musicians that he'd used on Walls and Bridges at the record plant in New York. And they started in earnest to finish what they had begun with Phil Spector. When production was nearing completion, John actually gave Morris Levy an early rough mix of the album just to prove to him that in fact, the album was being worked on. It was almost finished and it did contain three covers. But what did Morris do? He took that rough demo and he unlawfully pressed his own John Lennon album. It's called Roots, John Lennon Sings Rock and Roll Hits. You can get it, it's out there. Uh, so what did John do? He sued Morris Levy for uh, an unauthorized release of the album. Morris won and John won. Morris won because the original agreement was that John's next album, after the court settlement in 73, would contain three Morris Levy owned covers. Well, John released Walls and Bridges, so it only had one cover. So Morris was awarded $6,700 in damages. But because Morris had unlawfully uh, released the rough mix of what would become rock and roll, John was awarded $144,000. So obviously John came out on the good side there. So Rock and Roll was released in February of 1975. It went to number six in the UK, in the US. The lead single, Stand By Me, which was a fantastic cover of, of a Benny King song, uh, went to number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. I, I actually like that better than the Benny King version of the song for some reason. So this, I think it's a pretty iconic cover to be quite honest. This is a picture taken by uh, Jürgen Vollmer, who was a friend of the Beatles when they were in Hamburg back in the early 60s, before they were famous. Uh, this was taken in Hamburg in the doorway of a building. And uh, most people don't know about these three people that are blurry that are walking by is actually Stu Sutcliffe, George Harrison and Paul McCartney. So, interesting. Uh, it's a fantastic album of 50s and 60s up-tempo rock and roll covers. I mentioned Stand By Me already. Fantastic. It opens with Bebop Alula, which was a Gene Vincent song. A great medley of Ready Teddy and Rip It Up. You can't catch me, Chuck Berry. Ain't That a Shame, Fats Domino. Another Chuck Berry song, Sweet Little 16. Yeah, Yeah was the other Morris Levy song. 
great cover of Buddy Holly's Peggy Sue. I mean, there's 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 more, but I mean, just a great up tempo rock and roll record. I I think I love this because I love early fifties and sixties, you know, the the roots, the early days of rock and roll, and I I think I love that this is John paying homage to. The music that got him started. I mean, this was the kind of stuff that the Beatles would have played in Hamburg back in the day. So uh, you can sort of feel his his admiration for these songs coming through. So while there's no originals on here, and I guess artistically it doesn't hold a candle to Imagine, for example, this is still my favorite John Lennon record. So in honor of John's passing. 42 years ago this week, I just wanted to share my favorite John Lennon album and the absolutely bananas story about how it got made. Thank you everybody for watching. Appreciate it. Um, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. <laughs>